Now, we're going to figure out the moment of inertia of a uniform solid cylinder. Looks like this. A uniform solid cylinder. Now, when we look at this object, it looks like this. And we're going to figure out the moment of inertia of rotating it around this axis. So we're going to take it and we're going to rotate it this way, around this axis. Again, we have, we're going to call this the z-axis. The moment of inertia around the z-axis is going to be equal to the integral of r squared dm. Now, we need some dimensions on here. L is going to be the overall height or length of the cylinder. R, big R, capital R, is going to refer to the radius of the cylinder itself. And we need to now figure out dm. Now, dm, if we take an infinitesimally small piece of this, is actually going to be a circle which is extruded along this axis. This is dm. It has a radius of little r and a thickness of dr. In other words, we have our dm is a toilet paper roll. It's a circle which has a length l and is infinitesimally thin. It has a thickness that is dr. Now, this is the first time I'm using the difference between a capital and a lowercase r. The lowercase r refers to the variable. The uppercase r refers to the constant. The constant is the radius of the cylinder, whereas little r refers to the, ra the radius of dm, which changes. So we need to go through and figure out the moment of inertia. So we have to deal with dm. Again, we have this issue. Density equals mass over volume. Well, that's equal to dm divided by dv. So dm equals rho times dv. Well, dv is the volume of dm, which is a toilet paper roll. What is the volume of the toilet paper roll? It is not pi r squared times L, not rather than h rate. It's not pi r squared times L, because it's not a full circle. Flat. Is it just 2 pi r h because of differences? In the ah, very close. It is 2 pi r times L. That would be the area of it. Hold up. If I take the toilet paper roll, it's much easier to see the volume of this. Hey, teachers and students, please start an interruption. I just wanted to... Uh... So you can see, when I cut it, it's a little bit more obvious that the area of this is 2 pi r times l. Agreed? The volume, however, is not quite this. That's the area. What is the volume going to be? Tyler? 2 pi r l dr. dr. So we need the thickness of it as well, and the thickness is dr. In other words, dm is equal to rho times 2 pi little r times l dr. So we can figure out the moment of inertia. It is equal to the integral of r squared times rho 2 pi r times l dr. So we need to figure out what we can take out from that integral and figure out how to work with this integral. Let's see, we have uh, rho is a constant and 2 pi is a constant and L is a constant, so we have rho 2 pi L integral of r cubed dr. 
what is what are the limits for R, Andrew? Is that is that B? Yeah, Andrew. All right, sorry. It's okay. um, R is going to vary from. It's going to vary from zero to L. It doesn't vary from zero to L. It's because it's it's going to vary. Remember, we're talking about D M here. Oh, oh, uh, little R to big R. Ah. Almost, Jenkins. Zero to big R. Goes it all goes all the way from the middle, which is going to be from zero to big R. So we have rho times two pi times L times R to the fourth power over four from zero to big R. So it's equal to rho times two pi times L times R to the fourth power over four. This unfortunately is not the answer because it does, our moment of inertia should not depend on the density, so on and so forth. So we know that the density is equal to the total mass divided by the total volume. The total mass is, and divided by the volume here, the total volume is going to be pi, pi times big R squared times L, because that's the volume of the whole thing. So we could substitute now for the moment of inertia about the z-axis, that's going to be equal to, uh, the density was the total mass divided by pi big R squared times L, this whole thing multiplied by two pi, times L times big R squared, or big R to the fourth power over four. R squared cancels out, we end up with a two here. The total mass, we lose a two. We get a two down here and a pi cancels out. We end up L cancels out as well. We get one half times the total mass times the radius squared. The moment of inertia about this object, about its center of mass down the cylindrical axis, the long cylindrical axis, is one half times m times r squared. 